I think it's time for another review. What do you all think? Do you think it's time for another review? Here's Resident Evil 5. The review of the game. The Resident Evil 5 is a game mired in racist controversy. When I remember this game came out... <coughs> Excuse me, folks. I'll drop that voice, right? That's too harsh for my throat. I remember when this game came out, everyone was like, It's racist! RACIST! How's it racist? Because you were in Africa shooting black folk like you'd be shooting anybody else in the middle of the African continent. Which is strange because the same week Far Cry 2 came out, set in the African continent, in Africa, shooting native Africans who are black. So I was like, why did one get the controversy and the other didn't they? Probably because Far Cry 2 was a stonking pile of shite was quite unknown then, and Resident Evil was a massive franchise in its fifth outing. So I think that's why. So no, I don't think Resident Evil 5 is a racist game. It's no more racist to shoot blacks in Africa than it is to shoot Spaniards in Spain. Okay, now we've got that out of the road, I wanted to address that. It's something that's annoyed me for years. Let's move on with the game, right? So Resident Evil 5 launched on the 5th of March 2009. Quite an anticipated sequel following Hot in the Heels of Resident Evil 4. Didn't quite live up to that expectation because all the backtracking in previous games was rubbed out in favour of a level based approach. Now you could replay these levels as you wanted which is fine. Holding various secret slip emblems to find and shooting what knit. Controls are a bit better than Resident Evil 4 does, only a wee bit better. You still can't move and shoot at the same time. It's not really realistic to do that I know. But we're talking about a game based on half zombie, half lost Palaga, mutant spread by a company that no longer exists. Umbrella's gone at this point, and Albert Wesker's taken over, and he's got the Ouroboros, the Ouroboros virus, or whatever the fuck it's called. I can't even remember. I just remember the way it was pronounced in the game, the Ouroboros. Ah, that was fucking, fuck's sake, Americans, shape up in your pronunciations. It's not Ouroboros, it's Ouroboros. Everlasting. Jesus fucking Christ. You've, you've now got the BSAA, which was founded by Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. And Jill has gone missing. She's been missing for quite a while at this point from just about every game. The last one she was in was 3. as was years and years ago, back in the PlayStation 1 was the last time we saw Jill Valentine. Which has always fucking annoyed me. I don't really think that character's been given a fair shake. In fact, I think all the original characters from the very first Resident Evil game have been sidelined quite badly. I mean, we've both seen Jill since Resident Evil 3, and this is the first, I think this is the first out that I remember Chris being in since Code Veronica, and fuck that game once again. So, I not not too fucking chuffed with the characters being pumped into fucking obscurity for some reason in favour of floppy-haired Leon, who's a fucking twat. And, well, Claire's alright, I don't mind Claire. She's got a nice booty, so that's fine. <laughs> so we have the return of Chris Redfield and... One of the major negatives is his partner, Sheva Alomar. Because no matter how you play this game, you're going to have her following you around like a twat. <sighs> Escort mission the whole game. If Resident Evil 4 wasn't bad enough, this is worse. Because she is a fucking dunce. Another thing I don't like is that she has to have her own ammo. Like I know, I understand these things, right? You want the game to, it's a co-op game, you want the game to be played co-op like everyone around about that time. And it's like, we'll punish the people that don't want to play it co-op. So we'll, we'll make it seem like there's a co-op partner in here. And we're like, oh, she fucking needs help, she can die. I don't mind her dying, that's, that's fine, but can you know at least like give her like one set of ammo and that's it? Give her infinite ammo so I don't need to constantly fucking rearm this bastard as well as myself. Hard enough finding ammo for me, never mind for two people at the same time. Shite. And I kind of feel that a lot of the enemies in this game are just reskinned enemies to Resident Evil 4. You've got the return of the chainsaw guy who is a monumental pain in the tits. Who else have you got? Well, the, you've got your lost Palagas ball bags, they just kind of look the same now. It's just rather than being Spaniards, they're now Africans. I mean, it's no great shakes really, is it, fuck's sake? And you've got your boss battles against bigger, wormy people and... Ah, it's good. You can buy weapons, upgrade them. Once you've upgraded them fully, you can get infinite ammo on them, which is nice. And you can use those guns in harder difficulties. So, to be honest with you, if you wanted to maximise your weapons, start the game on easy. Play through it. Play through it on amateur. Well, oh, that is easy. Play it through it on normal, hard, very hard. And as you're doing that, upgrade your weapons all the time. So by the time it comes to the insane difficulties, you're, you're fucking rocking. You'll just fly through the game. It's a bit... A bit silly, but it's just a way of doing it. That's just the way I play the fucker. 
It's not how I played it at first. I played it normal, then I went through hard, and then the insane difficulty. That time I had like all the weapons, and most of them were upgraded. Infinite ammo and the rocket launch, and the rocket launcher kills the end in one fucking hit, so that's... <laughs> yes, please! Get your run time up there, because you kill everything in one. Like I just said, one fucking hit. I think the biggest, newest enemy in this one is the big, the big tough guy. He looks a bit like Pyramid Head. I'm no editing that Discord noise out, by the way. I can't be fucked. And you'll find him quite early on. I think he was part of the demo when the demo first came out. He's just this big fucker with an axe and got a lot of these spikes in his nap and he's got a hood. A sackcloth hood, Uri Seed. And he's pretty tough to take down, but he's it's quite satisfying when you do eventually pop his brains out of the fucking pavement and... Aye. So, I did complain about Resident Evil 4 being a brown, grey, green mess. Well, this is just like a, a sandy brown... Brown mess, aye, pretty much. Right back, and this time, this was the, the time of the brown shooter though, so I forgive it for that. Had some nice moments, so you're on the back of a truck and you've got like a big machine gun and you can just mow down these cyclists. Motorcyclists, not push bikes. Imagine them all fucking trying to catch you with push bikes, that's actually kind of, that's kind of funny. And then you'll get trucks, and there's a lot of really satisfying moments, and when this game first came out, I fucking loved it. I played it for a month solid and just really battered the shit at it. But now I'm just like, it's just okay, it's nothing special. I think that's just, age does this to these older games. Even in the, the, the later parts of the 360 era, they were still struggling with 3D games to a degree. And this is this is just what this is. This is a struggle. Constant sort of trying to figure out. We want it to be an action game, but you need to stand in place when you're shooting it. It's like, dump the realism, guys. You're dealing with zombies and mutants. I mean, I don't need it to feel realistic in any shape or form, and that includes having to give your partner fucking weapons and guns and bullets and health items and you're like, fuck right off, just make them invincible, because see if you don't, it just becomes a frustrating mess, and that is what the game descends into a lot of the time, it's just like, you throw her up in a fucking ledge to pick something up and it's like, she maybe stutter and run into things and then get her ass kicked and you're like, well there's nothing I can really do to help you, very annoying stuff. So, I in conclusion, this game's fine. Again, you get it for cheap, and you'll probably play it once or twice, and then that'll be it. It's a good co-op game. If you get somebody you want to play a co-op, couch co-op as well, which is one of the biggest saving graces of this title, I think. Um, that's a good thing. It's a really good thing. So, aye. It's, it's alright, for what it is. Right, folks. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Adios!